Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready for the SAT. It is the recommendation of Prince George's County Public Schools that most students take the SAT during the spring of their junior year. No student should take the SAT without prior preparation, and it should be known that it takes approximately four hours. During this program, you will become familiar with how to approach the different types of questions on the SAT, how to work within time constraints, and how to look for clues to reason through complex questions. Welcome to SAT Prep Math. My name is Ms. Metzl, and I'm from Parkdale High School. I'm the SAT math teacher at that school. Today, I figured we would cover a little bit of the algebra that is covered on the exam. Please do not think that what I'm covering today is the only type of problem that is there. But I would like to say that some of the algebra or the broad spectrum of the algebra portions are solving equations and inequalities, percent style problems that include um, simple what percent is X of 45, and others that may include percent of change, and then the rest are functions, just what you learned in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Today I have what I've called combining equations, consecutive integer style problems, percent style problems, and lastly a percent of change. Let's take a look at the combining an equation. If 2x plus 3y equals 5 and 3x plus 4y equals 6, then what is the value of 5x plus 7y? I'm sure when you were in algebra you remember they taught you three ways on how to solve equations. What we're going to use today is much like the subtraction method. Whenever you see these, please just rewrite the equations on the problem. 2x plus 3y equals 5, and then underneath of it put 3x plus 4y equals 6. I just rewrote these above each other so I can quickly go through it. Whenever you see one like this, they're either going to add them, subtract them, multiply them and possibly sometimes divide, but I've never seen it. So we're going to quickly go through these, and it's much easier doing it this way in a vertical than in a horizontal way. So quickly, 2 minus 3, or 2 mi So we're quickly going to go through it in a vertical versus a horizontal way. 2x plus 3x gives me 5x. I look back up here, and I see that I'm going in the right direction. 3 plus 4 gives me my 7y. And all I'm doing is combining like terms. So I found that all I have to do is add the two equations. If I add these two and add these two, they still are equal. So I found that 5x plus 7y equals 11. And I just go over here and I find my choice. I find that it's D. When I go to my bubble sheet, I will bubble in the letter D. Please keep in mind one thing, though. If you are doing these problems, you may want to quickly see what it, else it could be. So let's go back to this problem for one second. I want to show you a quick little shortcut that I found. If you're looking for 5x plus 7y, most likely you're keeping the same form as these, so it's going to be the addition or the subtraction. But if for some reason they have a square added on one of them or possibly both of them, you are most likely going to multiply them and you're going to use the FOIL method. Keep that in mind. What I said, if they keep the same t type, an X and a Y, all you're going to probably do is add and subtract, but if there's some sort of square in what you're finding, you're going to be multiplying the two equations. Okay, let's go on to the next style of problem, which is a consecutive integer problem. Let's read it. Four consecutive integers are listed in increasing order. If the sum of these integers is 450, what is the third integer on the list? One of my key term or key ideas for saving time while you're taking the test is once you're reading the question the first time, circle whatever they're telling you to find. So let's go back to the question and read it. Four consecutive integers are listed in increasing order. If the sum, that means add, so I'm going to write an, either write add or put a little plus sign, of these integers is 450, what is the third integer? That's what I'm trying to find. Now, when you're doing these problems, you have to know what consecutive integers means. First off, let's use consecutive. Consecutive means one right after the other. Integer, you do not want decimals, you do not want fractions, 
or radicals, anything like that. You're looking for plain old whole numbers, positive, negative, or zero. So we're going to make, I'm going to do it by coming up with a simple equation. The first one, and I like x, is going to be x. Well, if they're consecutive, the next one is going to be x plus 1. The first integer, you add 1. The third one, you're going to take the first integer and add 2. And your last one is x plus 3. Now, it said in the problem that the sum of these integers, so I'm going to add them all up and set it equal to 450. So x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 plus x plus 3 equals 450. And I'm quickly going to combine like terms. 1, 2, 3, 4x. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, equals 450. Quickly, I can solve this without my calculator. But remember, if you are not very good or not very strong or not sure of yourself, feel free to use the calculator that you have. Just do not make it your crutch because it will waste time while you're taking your test. Let's go back and finish solving the problem. I'm going to see here, and I'm going to see that they're adding, so I'm going to subtract. 450 minus 6 is 444. I'm left with my 4x. Divide each side by 4. Hopefully, quickly, you can see that 440, 444 divided by 4 is 111. If not, feel free to turn to your calculator. Now, the, this problem is a grid-in. Remember, there are two types of problems on the SAT. Multiple choice, like you just saw, and this one, which is a grid-in. Remember to always grid it in appropriately. You do not want to lose points because you grid it in wrong. So let's go back, and I'll show you how to grid this in. Okay, so I have solved for x on my paper, but I must double check quickly, and that's why I circle what I'm finding. What am I finding? Am I finding the first integer, which is x, or am I finding something else? So I look for my bullseye or my circle, and I see that I'm trying to find the third integer. The third integer is not what I found. First integer is 111. Second is 112. And lastly, it's 113. Now be careful because sometimes they may trick you and say that they're in decreasing order. That would change what or how you set up your list. In this instance, it said increasing, so I'm safe. So my answer is 113, my third integer. So I'm going to go over here to the grid in and remember to bubble it in correctly so you do not lose any points. The easiest way to do it is just start, write your number. This instance, it's 113. Remember, it's scanned by a computer. You do not want it, do not want to be, remember that it is scanned by a computer. You do not want to not get it graded just because you forgot a bubble in the ovals under, underneath. So let's go back and bubble it in. My first digit is a 1, so I'm going to bubble it in. My second digit is a 1, I'm going to bubble it in. My third one is a 3. Remember, it is one bubble per line. If you put the 3 under here, the computer will not be able to scan it and it will be marked incorrect. One digit per line or column and let's go to the next problem. The next problem is a percent problem. I know that they seem hard and kind of difficult because percents lead straight into fractions. They're not as hard as you think. So let's go ahead and go and work on the problem. The original mark price of a VCR was for $600. The VCR has been on sale with successive discounts of 25 and 10 percent. What is the present price of the VCR? I'm going to circle the present price of the VCR, just so I know what I'm looking for is a double check at the end. Now, it says the original mark price was $600. That's where I'm going to start. Now, I have to know what successive discounts mean. Successive means one right after the other. Successive means one right after the other. It does not mean you sum 25 and 10. You're going to take a 25% discount, and then you're going to take a 10% discount. Now, the easiest way to get a good score on the SAT is to find shortcuts. These types of problems are a, these types of problems are a great place to find that shortcut. You can knock out a few extra steps that you might put in if you don't know percents. So let's go back to the problem and I'll show you what I mean. 
I'm going to do this first discount the long way, and then I'm going to do the second discount the short way. Just so you see both, remember, these are suggestions. Use what works best for you. So I'm taking a 25% discount. That means I'm going to have to find 25% of 600. So 600 times 0 0.25 will give me my discount. The reason I am not multiplying it by 25 is percent means per 100. So you take the 25, you divide it by 100, and you get this decimal. Now, if you cannot do this in your head, which I will be honest, I cannot, so I'm going to turn to my calculator and quickly calculate this out. So you turn it on, and you just punch in 600 times 0.25. Close your parentheses, and I find that it's 150. So I'm going to go to my paper, and I'm going to write down my 150. But this is only the first discount. So I have to literally take this portion off of that. Discount means you're going to subtract it. So 600 minus 150 is $450. I still have to, now this is the long way of doing it. I find the discount, I subtract it off. Let's do the 10% the short way that I told you. 10% off is the same as 90% of the original price. So just like I multiplied here, I'm going to take the 450, the new price I just came up with, and I'm going to multiply it by the 90% that it's going to be. It's the same as taking off that discount, it's just a little shorter. And then I'm going to turn to my calculator and calculate this out. So I'm going to punch in the 450, and this time I'm going to use the multiplication, 0.9. And I find that it's $405. So I go over here and it's going for $405, I've got to find that on my bubbles. So I look, 405, and I would go to my answer sheet and I would bubble it in. One thing I want to make note on is if you look at the ch answer choice E again, let's read it together, is that it says it cannot be determined from the given information. Now. In my experience, if you're given a math problem with the it cannot be determined from this information, most times they're trying to trick you to say, oh, it's an oddball. I was told an oddball I should always choose. If you are not certain, and I'm talking 100%, ignore the answer and skip the problem if you can't come up with a numerical answer. We don't want you to lose that quarter of a point because you fell for the pick the oddball. Now, let's go to our last problem, which is another percent problem, but it's slightly different. Diana went on a diet. If her old weight was 120 pounds and her new weight is 110 pounds, what is the percent decrease? Here's the magic word, percent decrease. That's going to tell me that I don't need to know if it's positive or negative. They've already told me that it's going down. I just need to ask myself, what's the percent of change? There's a formula that you were given in class. I'm going to write it down for you. Percent of change is the original minus the new divided by original, and then you multiply it by 100 to turn it into that percent, because I'm going to end up with a decimal or a fraction answer here. Now, I can be honest, when I was your age, I always hated remembering the formal definition. So I always say old minus new over old. It's a lot easier and it's much easier to figure it out. And while you're writing it, if you can't remember it, it's a lot shorter to put on your paper so you don't put an answer or a number in the wrong spot. So let's go back to the problem. Now, this is a fairly easy problem. I just have to know what is the original amount. So I go back up here. Original means her old weight or where she began. Where did she begin? 120 pounds. So every place that there's original, I'm going to put 120. Then I've got to figure out, okay, what's the new? The new is 110, so I'm going to subtract it. And I'm going to multiply by 100. So if you can't do this in your head quickly, you're going to turn to your calculator. I can do part of this without it, and that's what I'm going to do. 120 minus 110 leaves me 10 over 120. I know that I can cancel my zeros because they're both, they have 10s on the top. 
or 10 on the top and 10 on the bottom when I turn it into its factors. So, and then I'm going to multiply by 100. And let's put it in our calculator and see what we get. I have, and I'm going to put my original number that I came up with, which was 10 divided by 120, and then I'm going to multiply it by 100. Notice that I stuck the 10 divided by 120 in, in the parentheses so that my order of operations is preserved in the calculator. And I press enter and I find that it's 8.3333 repeating percent. So I'm going to write that on my paper. 8.3 repeating percent. Now, I don't see exactly that number on this paper. So I can come up with the answer two ways. I know that B through E none of them are eight so it must be a but suppose I've got like eight and a half and eight and one-third is a choice I need to know what my obvious fractions are in a decimal form you should be able to recognize off the top of your head that three repeating is actually eight and one-third so I know my answer is a which means I would go to my bubble sheet and bubble in the answer a so, I hope some of learning a little bit about fractions and percent has helped you prepare for the SAT math section. I wish you luck and try to check out your local library or teachers if you need some more help for the SAT.